when we find ourselves triggered, usually it's already too late to respond because you, you can't think straight when you're triggered. Your frontal lobe literally shuts down. The, the part that allows you to have sound judgment stops working um, so that you could survive. So once you're triggered, it's usually already too late. So what can you do to kind of... Um, dull these triggers or like prepare for them, right? I think, first of all, it's a personal responsibility to seek trauma therapy and things like EMDR or IFS. I know these are a lot of like new acronyms for people, um, but these methods have truly, truly helped me to, I guess, dull the effects of the triggers that I once had in a way where talk therapy never could have. So like EMDR, it, it's, uh, I'm, I don't want to butcher it, but I think it's I, wait, EM, I movement, desensitization, reprocessing. <laughs> and what does that mean? What does it entail? Wow. How do I even say this? There are different methods, but um, the method that I went through was not so much about the eye movements as much as it was um, pulsates, like pulsating, um, gadgets in my arm, uh, in my hands. So all it is, is you're reprocessing, reprocessing a specific memory that haunts you to this day while engaging in some sort of rhythmic activity. So the original method is to just follow a finger looking back and forth and you're not getting hypnotized. You're literally just, just looking back and forth. And that eye movement actually tricks your brain into doing the same things that it would do when you're in REM sleep. So when we hit REM, we actually reprocess a lot of the activities that we did throughout that day. And we file away memories that could have been traumatic for us. But so many traumatized people can't have a deep sleep. So what happens is that all of those hurtful memories get lodged in, in their bodies and the brain is not able to file it away as a thing of the past. So whenever they get triggered, they behave and feel as though they are reliving the same trauma over again. So yeah, what happens is that when people are triggered, they feel as if they're reliving the same trauma all over again in real time. But when you go through EMDR, you allow your frontal lobe, the part that is creative, that controls judgment, abstract thinking, and controls your sense of time, you allow that part to be active while you're working through a painful memory. So your brain is practicing how to file it away as something of the past so that when the trigger happens again, it doesn't feel as urgent or immediate. It doesn't feel as though you are reliving it again. And what a lot of people who have gone through EMDR experience is that they feel as though it's no longer like a, a, an issue. Like they, they go, oh, that it's over with, you know, and that could have never happened <laughs> before. Like it, it, before they have all of the physical manifestations of someone who is very like anxious and bothered whenever the trigger occurs. But then after EMDR, they feel as though, oh, it's like, yeah, that happened, but it, it it's in the past. It, mm -hmm. It's a very interesting, interesting. experience. Um, so that's one of the few things that I, I experienced that I highly recommend. But if, you know, trauma therapy is not within your budget right now, which I completely understand. Sometimes the best thing you can do is to just take a pause. Um, and that could make a difference between ruining an entire relationship or, you know, making a complete scene and allowing yourself to breathe and, and reactivate that part of your brain that shut down. So, I included a lot of breathing techniques that helped me. And one of it, one of which is called the box breathing, where it's you visualize a box where you um, inhale for four counts and then you hold for four counts and then you breathe out for four counts and then you just repeat it. And that really helps to oxygenate your brain, fill your lungs in with air and, and just allow you to 
to have a chance at regulating again. 